Hey watercolor fans, I have a demo today. We're still working with circles. I know, everybody's getting sick of circles, but we're gonna draw a peach. Looky there, I'm sketching up the little butt crack right on that peach right now. Let's see, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? We are doing this tutorial mainly for the color interactions on the surface of the peach. There's so many color variations and color modulations on that surface that it has to be done in the wet on wet manner. I'm gonna start out with just blocking in some lighter blues on the top edge of this peach because there was kind of a reflective, a fuzzy reflective quality to the top of it. So I just dropped in a little light blue and we're blocking in the overall color, the lightest color of that peach. There's gonna be reds and oranges and blues and purples and everything in it, but the base color of this peach is this yellow ochre and orange color. So mixing things up, getting ready to add while it's wet. And I'm working on a Strathmore paper. I think it's a Strathmore 300. So it's better than the Canson paper and it dries a lot slower. And I mean a lot slower. I think I had to stop between each stage and let it dry for at least 10 minutes. All right, so I'm mixing up some dark reds. And this is, this is the key to working with getting all of these different colors and things to mix together is the wet on wet technique. Putting a little of that blue in there, a little darker purplish red. There we go. And again, still trying to get a sense of form, of 3D form. So there's going to be some highlights, very soft highlights because of the surface quality of the peach. And we'll drop in up and we'll work in a little background too right now. So the peach is really wet. I just want it to dry just a little bit. So I'm going to mix in some, some blues and some browns in there. Get a kind of a neutral color for the background. I'm working with a mop. Just doing an irregular edge on the, on the background. I don't, I don't want any straight edge. I'm going to come in and pick a little bit of a highlight on that reflected edge right along the little crease in the, in the center of the peach along the bottom edge on the other side, on the left side, a little broader highlight. You can see the color bloom, the colors flowing out of the orange peach into, the, into that neutral blue. And I'm going to fight every urge that I have to mess with it. So just let it, let it alone. All right, so it's dried just a little bit. I'm dropping in some dark reddish purples into that, that peach. So everything's still wet. Everything's going to flow and, and kind of mix. Get that fuzzy edge. Get some really saturated colors. Dropping that in to get the uh, form to happening and to indicate the textural and the color modulation on the surface of the peach. So it's a very complex series of colors and essentially I'm working with harmonious colors. It's not going to go haywire and if it does it's going to be a slow burn and something you'll be able to see and recognize and control. So this is one of my favorite assignments. I like to give my students just do these fruit pieces. You've heard me say that before, and it's, it's really just practicing your technique, your understanding of mixing colors, how thick, how thin, at what point, how wet should the paper be when I do whatever I want and see if it works. Now I'm dropping in a little bit of the shadow area, get a little definition on the shape of the shadow. Up a little more of the cool colors on the top there. But the students, they do like the uh, fruit and vegetable assignments. It's, uh, it's a simple form and they can really work and focus on their, their technique and knowledge. I do have a pepper, a couple peppers coming up. I have one based off of a square and I have one based off of a cone. Those will be dropping uh, sometime next week or the week after. 
So there you can kind of see all the interesting color variations going on. I'm dropping in some, some blue violet there, trying to get a surface modulation to the colors. It's really, really wet. And now it's dry. <laughs> Uh, about 10 minutes had passed, so it, it took a while for that to dry because now I'm moving into the stage two where I'm going to be finding some uh, shapes, add a little contrast, a little more deeper colors, richer colors, some glazing to fix some of the, uh, the uh, lighter colors. Remember, the stage one always seems to dry lighter than you expect, so you kind of have to beef up the colors a little bit, but right now, actually, Looks like I'm sliding into a little bit of stage three work, just getting a little bit of the detail on the top of the peach, create an edge. I'm going to try to fix that bloom that came in on the edge. So I'm gonna throw a little more contrast into the background, make that peach pop forward a little bit. Remember to put that little indent at the top. It's not a perfect circle. And this is why it doesn't matter if you can draw a perfect circle or not. With a peach, it's not a perfect circle. That bluish gray, that dark blue, it's really kind of serving as a, a tie between that light gray in the background and that serves as a transition down to the yellow all right, a little more red violet on the surface of that peach. I'm dropping it in. It's dry now, so there's going to be some sharper edges unless I feather it. And that's exactly what I did right there. Feathering it out. And adding a little more of the blue violet up there in that edge. It was so wet that that color really faded out as it dried so I need a little more of that purple color that nice harmonious color that red and red violet all right so I'm glazing in a little more saturated color and with the peach you know the uh, the back end of this piece won't be as long as maybe on the reflections piece that I posted where there seems to be a lot of bouncing around getting all those little highlights and all the fussy little details done. On this peach it's going to be a little more about the front end with the wet on wet and the glazing in the middle and then I'll come in and pop in just a smidge of some contrast and detail to wrap it up. Picking a little bit of the highlight on that edge. Lifting a little bit on the top there. And on the very top. And if you remember, I started with that blue on top of the peach and because of all the saturation of the other colors and that dark background, it looks white, right? So it's, it's, it's still got a very faint blue just enough to, you know, give it a nice cool feel. All right, I'm just still bouncing around. It's dried enough that uh, these are a little more definitive marks and textural marks, so I'm not looking for it to feather quite as much. So it's a little more detail and texture. Adding a little more contrast up there at the top, right there where the stem would meet the peach, a little structural line work, adding a little more definition, just bouncing it around. It's not a continuous line. And our last final glazes of some red orange, just to pop up the saturation. And this piece is coming to a close. I hope you enjoyed watching this and here's the final piece looks pretty good for a quick little study hey if you got any value out of this video let me know 
drop me a comment, give me a like, hit the subscribe button, all the above, and I'll see you in the next video.